In today's video, I'm going to show you every S Pen feature on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So first, let's start by talking about how the S Pen actually works with the Note phone. So if you have an S Pen, it's not going to work with an S9 or S9 Plus. It only works with Note devices because there is a unique digitizer within the screen that is able to power the S Pen. So that means when I hover over the S Pen, I don't even need to pair up the phone. It will just show that I can interact with the screen. That also means that I can take other S Pens and use them as well, any S Pen that is compatible. So inside the S Pen, there are a bunch of coils in here so that when you get to close to the screen, it is able to interact with the phone. So that is why the Note may cost a little bit more and also why this is such a powerful S Pen compared to a stylus that you can buy at the store. So now that we understand that, a few other things that you need to know is when the S Pen is interacting, you'll see that little dot on the screen, you cannot use touch input. So that's one of the benefits if you're drawing or something, you have the S Pen on screen and your tan touches, it will not interact with the screen and mess up your drawing. So that's one cool little feature, but whenever you're within 10 millimeters, that is when the S Pen interacts. Now with the Note 9 S Pen, there is a super capacitor in here where you're able to do a few extra functions when the S Pen is away from the phone and we'll get to those in a minute, but that is essentially how the S Pen works with the phone. And then one other thing that I get asked a lot is what does this little clicky part at the top of the S Pen do? That is just to help eject the S Pen out. You could also call it the OG fidget spinner, you know, if you're a fidgeter, it's really nice to have just like a clicky pen. And then here you have a button on the screen. So whenever I say press the button, that is the button I am talking about. And we'll get to that in a minute. So I want to start off by going to the locked position of the Note phone and talking about screen off memo. So when your Note 9 is locked, and you eject the S Pen, it will automatically go into screen off memo. Once the off screen memo has opened up, you can begin writing just like this. You don't have to do anything, open any application. I do wanna show you a quick tip. So if say you draw something, you wanna quickly erase it, you don't actually have to go up to the eraser. All you have to do is hold down on the S Pen button and there it is an eraser. So I can go through and erase all this and then I can write something else. So then you have a few other options on here. If you want to keep writing, let's say you fill up this full page, all you need to do is press the arrow right here, or you can swipe up with your finger and that will take you to the next page and you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and make many pages. Uh, I don't think I've ever reached the end. So here you have an option which is a little pin. So this is the pin to always on display. So if I tap that, it will actually let me know that I'm going to set this as my always on display. And here when I pin to always on display, it will last for 30 minutes. So here I'm going to select pin. And now you can barely see it on here, but that note is on my screen and that will stay there for 30 minutes. If I would like to edit the note, all I need to do is tap on it two times. It will pop it back up and then I can begin editing it. So then I could add a few things to this list. Maybe I'm at the grocery store or I want to um, just write some new notes here. And then I could go back up to the top pin it to the window and there it has actually set it back on the home screen. So then let's say I wait 30 minutes and it goes away. So if I tap the little arrows here, double tap, it will then go away. If I want it to come back, you can see this little paper with the pin. I tap that twice, you can use your finger or the S Pen and it comes right back. So then if I double tap the trash can, that will completely delete it. But here I'm going to tap on it to edit it one more time. So now if you have finished writing your off screen memo, you can either select the save and notes and then it will take you to the lock screen. Or all I need to do is place the S Pen back into the phone and that will instantly hide my note. And it has saved that into the Samsung Notes application. If the pin to always on display option is not there on the off screen memo, it's because you have actually turned off always on display on your phone. The other option is because you are editing a note and it cannot be saved, you would need to save a new note to save it to the always on display. Now before we leave the always on display, I do wanna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna double tap to delete that note. But now if I am on my lock screen, I have my S Pen out and I wanna create a new note, all I need to do is press the button while I am in within that 10 millimeters and it will then go right to my off screen memo. You don't have to put the pen back in and pull it back out. 
And if at any time you just wanna to go to the home screen, all you need to do is double tap the home icon and then unlock your device. Now, if we head into the Samsung Notes application, here you will see the notes that I have created and it is showing up in yellow on my device. So that is a little bit hard to read. So if you want to adjust that, all we need to do is go into the settings of the phone, go to advanced features and S Pen. So this is where all your S Pen features will be available. So here I'm going to select screen off memo. And right now it's saying use S Pen signature color. So right now my S Pen is yellow. So I'm gonna turn that off. If you had a lavender S Pen, it would actually show up in purple. So now that we have turned that off, I'm gonna show you real quick, open up my screen off memo, and there we can write in gray. And then when I save that into my notes, it will actually save as a black pen. So if you want to change that, that is how you can quickly do it. So there you can see that it is black instead of the yellow. Next, let's jump in and talk all about Samsung Notes. This is where all the notes on your phone will be stored if you are using any of the S Pen functions. So here, if I wanna edit any of these notes, so I can go back into the Note 9, and then if I tap the note again, there I could actually write more and add more information. So up here, you also have a text option. So if I wanted to just write out some text, you can just enter it with your own handwriting, just like that. Press the down arrow and that will hide. So up here we have ABC, so that is where you can actually just use your S Pen to write. Down here we have a few options. I could quickly change the color and the pen settings. Again, if you hold down the button, you can then quickly erase. Here you have the undo and the redo. And you will notice that when I am hovering over these options, you will see what the mode actually is. There are so many settings on this phone, it's hard to know everything about what the phone can do. So when you hover over, it will actually give you context to what that little option does if there's no wording on it. So then over here, we have the lasso tool or the selection tool. So if I write something and let's say I want to move that, I select the selection tool, I grab what I want to move, and then I can actually drag that, make it bigger, cut, copy, delete, extract the text, move to the front or the back. So you could have different layers of the object. And then last down here, we have easy writing pad. So when we select easy writing pad, it is going to blow up kind of what is right there so that we can easily write and align all of our text together. So if I start writing, once you finish a word, it will then move along and you can keep writing and keep all of your text aligned and the same size, and then you don't have to shrink it all down right here. And you could also move this around. Maybe you wanted to move it up. You could have it right here, and there it would move down to the bottom. So that is the S Note writing option. And then last here at the top, we do have the brush option. So there are a few different cool things you can do in here. So you can just draw like normal. I really like a few of these brushes, like this one, the oil paint brush. So if you draw in one color, and then you select another color, you can mix those colors together so you can get some really fun drawings that way. And then once you select save, you'll notice that it saved the drawing down here. So it's created these different categories of options. So here was my off-screen memo, and then here was another addition that I added, and here is the drawing addition. Again, if you wanna edit one, you would just tap on it and it will take you back into the options to edit there. And then when you are completely done, you can select save, and then you can start up here, you could share it. When you share it, you have the option as an SDOC file, PDF, image, or text only. Now, a lot of people have asked, can I export these files into the S-Note application? Now, there is not an easy way to do that. My suggestion would be to export as an image, and then you can import into S-Note, but that might be a topic for another video. Up here in the settings, you do have a few more options. You can delete the note, you can lock it so it's password protected. Here you could pin it to the home screen. So let's say I want to get back to this note at another time. Now if I go back to my home screen all the way over here, you will notice that it has pinned that note. I would just need to tap on it twice and it takes me right back here. Here in the menu, you then also have the option to set to a reminder so it would remind you about the note. And then here you could print that note. Now, a few other things I wanna talk about is that you can actually categorize all of your notes. So over here in the menu of the notes, here you have a ton of different options. So if I long press on this, it will then give me the option to move it and I can move it into a certain category and here I could add a category there. Also, when you are editing a note or you are adding content to your Samsung notes, you can select the insert attachment here and you can add an image or a voice. So if I wanted to record a note or maybe I'm listening to a lecture, I could actually record it in here. When I stop, then I just select play. So if I wanted to record a note or maybe 
and it will play right there and it will store it within your note. And then here you have a few more options where you can actually turn off the rich text. So down here it will hide the different styles there. And then you have the other option to turn off S Pen only. So with S Pen only, that means that I'm only able to write with my pen. But now that I turn that off, I can actually use my finger to write as long as my S Pen is away from the screen. Now there's one last feature in Samsung Notes that I wanna talk about. So previously on Note devices, there was something called Action Memo, where you could write something on screen and touch a button and it would open that in a different application. So you can still do that within Samsung Notes. So let's say I write a phone number. So we're gonna make it super complicated here. And the number does have to be nine characters long. You can also write an email address or a website or a math equation. So once you write that down, you do need to make sure it is as clear as possible. Select save, and then you will notice that it pops up in this blue color, meaning it recognizes the information. So when I hover over this now, I can select the phone icon, and that will actually take me to the phone app and I could make a call. Here, I could select the email icon, and then select email, and it will take me to my email app. Here, I can select tech with brett.com, select the globe, and it would take me right to that website. So this is really nice. If you write it down on the off-screen memo, you can then easily get back to that information. And then lastly here, we do have a calculation. It didn't get my square root, but if we select calculate there, it took me right into the calculator, 64 plus two. So that is how you can technically use action memo here within Samsung Notes. And then last, when you create a note, that is how you can do it. Another cool trick I wanna show you, if you wanna quickly create a note while you're using the phone, just hold down the S Pen button, double tap the screen, it will take you right to your notes application. So when you select save here, it will save it right into Samsung Notes. We have a few of the same options here. We can minimize the window, tap it, and then we can make it big. We can do full screen or close it right there. So there you have the turn on S Pen only, and we have Samsung Notes at the top there. So that is Samsung Notes. Now, if you are a old school Samsung user and you do not like Samsung Notes, you can download the S Note application. You will just need to go into your apps here, go into Samsung folder, go into the Galaxy apps, and here is where you will search for S Note. Now, all the default settings that we've done, like when you hold down the button and double tap the screen or the off screen memo, that will always default those pictures into Samsung Notes but here you can actually open S Note and then you can actually go into the settings and resync your account so that all your existing S Notes from older devices will show up. But there is no way to sync this info over to Samsung Notes. They're kind of independent apps at this point and that's just kind of how it is. Now let's talk about the brand new feature that's specifically on the Note 9 S Pen, which is the super capacitor or the battery inside the device. So if we go again into the settings of the phone, advanced features, right here we have S Pen features, and at the top, we have the new feature S Pen Remote. So when you open this up here, I can see that my S Pen is disconnected because I've actually been using it for about 30 minutes without plugging it in. When I wanna charge it, all I need to do is place it into the phone and it will automatically recharge. It only takes about 30 seconds to be able to charge it up. And there you can see that it's already at 100%. Now it has been said that you could use this for about 200 clicks and that battery would go down. Now again, that battery is only for the remote functions not for the actual usage of the S Pen. So then down here, we have the option to change the camera. So right now, if I hold down the S Pen, it's going to open up the camera, or I could go in here and select any application that I actually have on my phone and would open up that application, or I can select the S Pen only features. Then down here, you have the option to choose what certain apps change what features. So when I hold down the button and it opens the camera, I can then take a picture or I could choose to switch camera, record video or do nothing. If I double press here, it's gonna switch camera or I could have it record video um, or whatever. So then there are certain applications that have this functionality. Here the gallery, you can skip to the next item, the voice recorder. In Chrome, you have these options. Now these have just automatically shown up. I haven't had to do anything to have these show up. It will just automatically come onto your phone if you have those applications installed. So here you have master control. So say there's an application that is not showing up here. If the app supports camera controls, when you press the button, it will take a picture. Or you have an app that does music. When you press the button, it will pause or play and double press will skip the song. So let's test out some of these features real quick. So here 
I am away from the screen. So when you're close to the screen and you press the button, it's gonna go out like that. But if you're away from the screen, hold down the button, it will then take you right into the camera application. Now, if I double press, it will take me to the front camera. And then if I press once, that will actually snap a photo. If I double click again, it will take me back. Um, and then if you hold down the button again, it's not gonna do anything because we are already in the camera application. But now if I'm back to my home screen and I press the button, that will actually play or pause whatever I was listening to in the background. So there I press it again and it will pause it. Now if you want to know what is happening in the background, you can actually just hover over this and it will show you that right now, if I press the button, it will pause or play or it will skip. And then if we tap on our air command, down here it will show you those options as well. So if I want to quickly change that from player pause, I could change it to skip or do nothing. And then this will interact with whatever application you are in. So let me show you. So if I go into the gallery, here you can see that when I press the button, it's going to show me the options down here for the gallery. So if I press next, it's gonna to skip to the next picture. If I double press, it will go to the previous item. So once I'm in my album, I open up a picture. So now all I need to do is press the button and it will go to the next picture. If I double press, it will go back, press once, it will go forward. So that is how it kind of works within certain applications. Again, one more, if I go into Chrome, I press the button, I have it set to scroll down. If I double press, it will go back up or you could have it go back or forward. Now this will work in typical Bluetooth range, about 30 feet. And then if you wanna quickly go back to the S Pen settings, select the air command and then select settings here and it will take you right back into those and you could change your S Pen remote settings. So this will also work with PowerPoint and even work when you have the Samsung DeX connected to your device. So while you are in this menu, this is actually where you could change out your S Pen. So the S Pens that come with the Note 9, you have the yellow or the purple S Pen. If you lose that, or you actually want to buy a different S Pen found in the description below, you can actually come up here, select the menu and select reset S Pen. So you can do this without the S Pen. I can do that just with my finger. But let's say I lost this S Pen. I buy a new one. I could repair it. Or if I go and get a different color, I can repair it as well. So then I select reset S Pen. So now it is set to default S Pen setting. So now when I want to pair this S Pen and you'll know it's a Note 9 S Pen because of the colors, the other ones are black or blue, um, but the new ones are yellow and purple. So then I place this right in here and it will begin pairing the S Pen to the phone. It does take a little bit, but it will actually pair up really quick. It will also charge the S Pen if the supercapacitor does not have any more charge to it. And now the S Pen has been paired. You can see that it is available. So if I eject it, I now have the Bluetooth functionality, hold down the button, it will then pop up on screen. And there you go, now your S Pen is paired again and you can use the BLE or the Bluetooth low energy function. Now the range on the Bluetooth is about 30 feet. I have been able to see it go a little bit further than that, but uh, that's about typical the range that you will get. Now the next option here is unlock with the S Pen remote. So if your S Pen has battery and let's say you have it sitting aside and your phone is locked, so make sure that that is enabled. So now my phone is locked. I can just press the button here and that will actually unlock my phone, go right to the home screen or whatever application I was just in. Now next, let's dive right into the air command settings. So you'll notice that when I press the button close to the screen, it will pop up this air command. And depending on what side of the screen I press the button, that is what side the screen the air command will show up on. Also in the S Pen settings, you have an option right here that you say when the S Pen is removed, open air command, create note, or do nothing. So right now I have it set to open air command. So that means if I remove my S Pen when my screen is on, there it is going to open up the air command. You would just need to go into those settings and change that if you don't like it that way. So first here you have create note. So that's just what I did by holding down the button and tapping twice on the screen. The next option is the smart select. So this is a way that you can quickly take awesome screenshots. So if I want to take a screenshot of a certain part of the screen, I would easily be able to do that. And then here I can use Bixby Vision. I could draw on it, share it, set as my always on display, and then I can save it here. But there's a few other cool options you can do. So if I go back into my gallery here, and let's say I want to cut out my Mr. Incredible here. So I'm gonna press the air command, go into smart select. Up here I have the option to choose rectangle, lasso, oval, 
gift. So I do wanna cut him out right here and I could choose lasso, but I'm actually just going to choose the rectangle option. And then I'm gonna start up here and drag all the way down to the bottom corner here. So then you get a few options up here at the top, which is auto select, or I could pin to screen. So auto select allows you to cut along the edge. So it does its best to find the edge of the object. Here it didn't quite get it all. So here I'm just going to select remove and then I could draw right here. And now it has removed that portion and you just kind of play with it until you get it exact to what you want. And then when you save this, it will actually save it as a PNG so that you can import that into other applications and have this overlap somebody or a picture. You can make some really fun different things there. So let's go back and choose the other options. So let's say I have another picture here that I want to draw or something. If I go into the air command, smart select, here I'm gonna choose rectangle again. So I choose that option. And then up here we have the extract text. So it would actually find any text on the screen. You could easily copy and paste. Maybe it's a picture you wanna extract the text from, you can do that. And then here you can pin to screen. So that means it's actually going to hover this little picture up here on the top of the screen. You can't change the size or anything, but maybe I'm trying to draw it, this picture in the background on my Samsung Notes. I can have it floating on top quickly draw it just like that. If you tap on it, you have the option to save or minimize or close. So if I minimize it, it's just going to hide right here. So I could do some drawing, pop it back up to see what it looks like just like that. And then let's close that down. And then one more feature there was using a GIF option. So let's go to a video that I want to record a GIF from. Rewind it here. All I need to do is go into the GIF option. So we're going to set like smart select, and then we're gonna choose GIF animation right up here in the top. So now I'm gonna choose this box on where I want it to record the GIF, and you do have the record and then high quality or standard quality. So if you want it to send in a text or over a message application, you may wanna select standard quality, but I'll just choose high quality for now. And then I'm gonna select play, and then I'm gonna select record, and then it will record whatever is on screen. So then I hit stop and I can close down my YouTube here. So there it has recorded that as a GIF. So that's just going to loop over and over. If I want to add something on the screen down here, I can select draw and then it gives me the option to draw and I could choose my color. And now I can write something on screen. And then when you are done, I can select save and share, or I could preview it right now, see how it goes. So there you go, tech with Brett, tech for you. Not the best meme I've ever made, but pretty close. And then down there, you can select save. It does take a second. It will take me right back to the home screen. So that is the smart select option in Air Command. And then here we have the view all notes. So if I select that, it's just gonna take me to the Samsung Notes, we can view all the notes there. The next option in Air Command is Screen Write. So Screen Write allows you to quickly write on the screen. So here, if I wanna meme this picture, I could quickly do that. So anything you have, maybe you have a document that you wanna make some notes on, you could quickly do that. Here you could crop it, share it, or save it as well. The next Air Command option is the Live Message. So Live Message allows you to quickly send a unique message to somebody. So when you pop this up, you have a few different options. One is you can actually change the background color. So if I want to adjust the color here, you can choose something that floats your boat. And then up here at the top, you can actually choose a pen effect. So you have quite a few here. You have ink, glow, sparkle, hearts, and snowflake, and right now I'm on the rainbow. And then here I could choose the color of rainbow that I want to write with. So as I write, it will just change the color there. And then once you play the button, and if you mess up, you can just use the undo button. And then when you're done, you select play. This is actually how it's going to show up for the other person that you send it to. And you can send this to any other phone. It doesn't have to be Samsung phones. It can be any phone that recognize a GIF format. So you have the options to do high quality, normal quality, or you could actually send it as a video, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna select normal quality here, select done, and then it is going to save that away. 
So now let me show you that if you're in the messaging application and you want to message somebody right here on your keyboard, you actually have the live message option. So I can select live message. I could then change the background again. So if I wanted to choose a different image that I actually have in my gallery, I can do that. Now a third option down here is I can choose my emoji. So if I have one of my emojis here, I can select it and then I could actually change the same thing that I would have done before, the ink, the glow, all of that. Here I can change the size and the color on screen. And then I can write on here. And then here you have all the same options. You can change the format, select done, select share. And then once you select save, it's actually going to attach that right into the message. And I can select send. I didn't have to go back in and attach it, but that is how you can use live message. So then the next option right here is the translate option. So I actually received a comment the other day, didn't know what it said. I use this to be able to translate it. So here, if we go into our Chrome application, so let's say we are browsing on a website that does not have an English option, or you're looking up a menu in a different language and you wanna translate it. So here I'm on Amazon in Spanish and I wanna translate it to English. Here, if I hover over this, it's going to tell me that that word means account three. And then down here, we have a few other options. I can do one word at a time. So there we see that that word says proof. But if I go up here and tap the T, it's actually gonna change to paragraph. So now if I hover over this, it's gonna say try Amazon Prime today and get free fast shipping without limit. So anything that you hover over, you are able to actually quickly translate it right on screen. If you wanna change the language, here you have a bunch of different source languages you can choose, or you have a bunch of different target languages that you can choose. And it will remember the last language that you selected. And then if we wanna close that, just select the close option right there. Next, we have a few other options here. We have the coloring tool. So coloring is a feature within the Penup application. So my kids really love this. They can come in here and draw all kinds of different pictures. You just select start coloring. If you want to save this, you would need to create a Penup account. But I really like that I can just choose an option. Down here, you have a paint bucket to fill and you can fill in and make this look really cool really quick. Or you can just use the brush up here, just like the Samsung Notes application, turn off the pen, and then you can make some really fun drawings. So if you have some awesome pen up drawings, I would love to see them. Let me know on my social media accounts, at Tech with Brett. And then here you can save as draft, you can go into the settings there and adjust some different things, but that is the coloring feature. And then I can select save, and then also down here, I can see what other people have drawn as well. The next feature here is Glance. So Glance allows you to go back and forth between two applications really quickly. So let's say I'm looking at my bank account right here. I have a bunch of transactions and I wanna do some calculations and make sure everything looks good. So I'm gonna pop up the air command and then I'm going to select Glance. And then down here, it actually hid my application. So let's say I wanna do some calculations. So now I can go into the calculator and you know, do whatever calculations I want, you know, so keep it super complicated for you guys. But if I want to go back to my app, I'm not even gonna to touch the screen and I just hover over my finance app and there I can see all the information. I could interact with the application and everything and then as soon as I move my S Pen, it will actually hide that application. So you're gonna glance back at this app and then you can move it and use another application. So there you would wanna make sure that you're in the app you wanna hide before you go and open the Glance feature. And then if I wanna turn off Glance, I can hold this down and drag it right up here to the remove bucket. And that is how you can use Glance. The next air command option is Bixby Vision. So Bixby Vision allows you to use your S Pen to hover over things on the screen and it will give you certain information. So here just hovering over an app, it lets me shop, I can search images, text, or even I could do a QR code. So let's go into our gallery here, go back and choose a different image. So let's just choose my logo right here. So if I hover over, it's going to find my face there and I could choose the image option. So that's actually going to search Pinterest and find other images that look similar to mine. So there you go, pictures with circles. Pretty accurate, I know. So then let's go to another object. Let's say we want to Look at uh, SpongeBob here, hover over, and I think we can drag this, yeah, you can make that bigger, and then we're going to go shopping. And again, this will look through 
um, different categories. So here we have Walmart, and there it actually found a few different SpongeBob iPhone cases. Well, that's great. But uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different things that you can do there. And then the text option. So let's say we have some text on the screen. If we hover over one of these, select text, it is then going to search that text. We could easily copy it, export it, and translate it right there. So that is how you can use Bixby Vision, and it will search all kinds of things. If we go up into the settings, it's going to shop, image, text, QR codes, and then here it shows some other basic Bixby information and Bixby settings that you can use. And then the 10th option we have down here is magnify. So magnify can take your screen and magnify it up to 300 times. So right now it's set at the 300 option. So as soon as you touch the screen, it kind of hides away. And if you are drawing, it actually hides. So if we go into Samsung Notes, and let's say we go back and edit this drawing, when we're using it, draw on the screen, it will hide the magnify, but we could magnify and see what we're doing in further detail. Up here, I can select 300 go down to 150, maybe it's a little too magnified, you can do it there. So this is great on apps that don't support a magnification. And then here we can make it go bigger and smaller. So there's the small size, and then here is the bigger size, and we would select close right there. So in the air command option, we can actually adjust all of these. So I can hold this down and move it to a different position. So I'm just not touching the screen right now, but then once I touch the screen, I can actually drag these up and down. And then if you wanna change what is here, I can actually long press one of these and I could remove it. And then here you have an option to add a different shortcut. So you can add a total of 10 shortcuts and you can add any application that you have on your phone. So up here at the top are all the S Pen features that I just went over. And then down here is all the applications that I have stored on my phone. So if I wanted to add maybe Facebook, every time I open up Air Command, I wanna go into Facebook there, it will add. I could quickly remove these over here on the side just by pressing the minus button. So that is all the features in Air Command. So the next feature is AirView. So AirView allows you to see information when you hover over the screen. So like if I'm in my notification panel right here, I can hover over this video and it will tell me the full title of that YouTube video. Up here, the same thing, hover over my YouTube video, it tells me the full title. Down here, I can see all of that information without having to touch or pull down. I can see it all at once with the S Pen. Now there are certain applications that support more information. So if I go into my email app, here I hover over an email and it'll actually show me more about the email. Here I can do a few things. I can move, snooze, unread, reply, or delete the email without even going into the email. So we'll do that all up and down. Now that has to be the stock email application. If I'm in the My Files application and there's a file that I see, I can hover over and it will pop it up full screen again. On the pictures, I have a share option and a delete option. Over here on the internet, we have similar things. So um, if I want to hover over, actually this is where I can show you how you can scroll up and down. So if I scroll down right here, I just hover over and it's gonna scroll down. If I go up to the top, I can scroll and it's gonna go up. And then you'll notice that my icon changes. So right there, it actually changes to a pointer finger. And then you still have just the basic air view button down there at the bottom. Now, if we go into the calendar, and I'm in the month view, I can actually hover over a certain day and it will show me more information about that day. So without having to open and close every single day, I can see all of that information. Now next here we have the gallery. So within the gallery, we can actually go in and hover over an object and we can see more information. Here, let's say I want to edit that. I could do it right up here, I could share it, or I could delete it. So it will show me those icons for all of those. And it just makes the picture a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what picture you are looking at at the time. You can also use AirView within the gallery on videos. So here I have a video. When I open it up and then I select play, I then get the option to drag over the timeline and it will pop up this little thing on the screen so that I can quickly see the thumbnail and find the right part of the video that I want to go to. Also, when you are in a text message application and you have a link here, I can hover over techwithbrett.com and then it will pop up a little bit of information about techwithbrett.com. There you go, finding tech solutions for you. And there I can hover over a picture. It will do the same thing. I get the option to save that picture. 
So one other place that I really like to use AirView is within a web browser. So here, if I'm in Google Chrome, many of the web browsers will work if you're using the mobile website, but sometimes you do need to use a full web page. So here, if I go into the shop category, you have all these different categories. Well, now if I just hover over, it's actually gonna show me those different categories and I can quickly scroll through. I could use my finger to touch on them, but this just makes it super quick and easy to go through that. I've actually had a few websites where it will not pop out unless I'm using the S Pen and then I can go over and choose the item. But sometimes those menus have just been hidden and it's been completely impossible to use. So that's why the S Pen is so handy in this situation. Also, certain websites I've seen where I cannot actually see information because when I tap with my finger, it doesn't work as well. So here, if I'm in my YouTube analytics on the full website, I can hover over and it will give me more information just like that. So then I can see that my likes have been down over the last little while. So uh, if this video is helpful, make sure you give it a like. But yeah, it's quick and easy to see all of that information with the S Pen. So next let's move on to a feature called direct pen input. So let's head into the message application. So right here I have a text field. Anytime I hover over a text field, you'll see this little T icon. So if I tap that T icon, it's going to pull up my text box. So right now I actually have a setting set that when I have the S Pen out, it will automatically turn on the text setting. So let me show you now, I go into the text message app, I pull up the keyboard, it's going to do this, but now if I hover over and press the T, it's going to change it to direct pen input. And then I can write my message down with my handwriting. And so I don't actually have to use the keyboard or anything. And then I can quickly erase. So if you are having trouble writing things down with your handwriting, you can use this help guide down here to learn how to add and delete text. But deleting is pretty simple. You just drag over it. Or if you have something written, you can just scribble it out and it will erase that as well. So then that will work anywhere that there is a text box. So again, back in Chrome, if I hover over there, you see the T, I tap the T, and then I could erase this and write in a new message, but that will work anywhere you can see a text box. And on the Samsung keyboard, you do have the option right here where you can quickly tap the handwriting option to go into the handwriting mode. Now, if you're using another keyboard like the Gboard app, this is one that I use, you can actually download a handwriting mode. It shows up as another language. And here I can do that as well. And I could quickly write and delete items right here and we can write a message and it will quickly translate it. So you do have other options other than the Samsung keyboard. Now next I wanna talk about S Pen Gesture. So I've already shown you one where you hold down the button and tap the screen twice and it pulls up the notes. But now I wanna show you if you hold down the S Pen what can happen. So let's say I'm on a website or I'm in a text message where I have some information I wanna copy. All I need to do is hold down the S Pen and you'll actually see the pen change from a little pointer to a text selector. So I can hold down and then I can drag over that text and I can select it all and then you can copy, select all, share, dictionary, and more. So that's really easy to do with the S Pen. And again, any text on screen, I can just hold down and select just like that, copy, share, you have all those options. So I've had a few questions on whether direct pen input works in certain applications. So here, if we are in a text field, we type in the box, you would just need to select the handwriting mode and there you can actually change the text that's in there and write it out with your hand, but the little icon does not pop up on the screen. Let's also go into Word and try that out. So here we select input, there it would just pop this up and you could write down your entire novel right there within Word on your phone with your S Pen. Now the next place you can use the drag and hold is in the gallery. So I really think of this more like a mouse. So here you have the air view, but then if you hold down the button and drag on the screen, you can actually select multiple items at once. If I wanted to deselect these, I hold down and drag over. And then if I wanted to move these all into another folder, I could actually hold down and it'll pull up this option on the side and I could drag them into any of the folders over there on the side. So that is how you can quickly use the copy and paste as well as select feature with the S Pen.
Previously on Note devices, there was also an option to quickly write on a PDF, but that is no longer available on the Note 9. So I do suggest downloading the Adobe Acrobat application where you can open up a PDF and then you would just need to select the comments down here. So here you could use the highlight option or you can actually use the free hand drawing and you could change the color there. So if you wanted to mark up something, you could do all that. And then there's another option where you can do Adobe fill and sign where you could use your handwriting to create your signature. So then lastly, there are a few settings in the settings of the S Pen. So again, settings, advanced features, S Pen that I do want to talk about. So we've talked about all of these. If you don't want the pointer icon to show up, you can turn that off just by turning that off right there. Here you could quickly change your air command shortcuts in the menu there. Here you can turn off the floating icon. So you can still have air command pop up, but when it closes, it doesn't have that floating icon on your screen. And then here you can change what happens when you remove your S Pen. So if you want it to do nothing, you could do that. Or if you want to create a note, you can do that. Or air command, you have that option. So next we have the S Pen alarm, which this will alert you if you leave your S Pen behind. So this is all about motion and not distance. So some people think if I move 30 feet away or something, it's gonna alert me. It's actually about movement of your phone. So right here it will say the last detached is at 918 at 12 a.m. But if I lock the screen, I can then move the phone. So it takes about 15 steps. And there I have a notification that. And when you walk away about the 15th step, it will actually give you a notification that you left your S Pen. So there it popped up. It says, remember to attach your S Pen when you have finished using it. And again, you could go into the settings and you could see exactly the time that you left your S Pen. One time I actually lost my S Pen. It was a black one. I couldn't find it. I kind of looked at the time and I was like, oh, I think I left it here and is actually able to find my S Pen. Then down here you have the power saving option. So the only reason that you would want to turn off this power saving option is if you wanted to use another S Pen. So when power saving is off, I can have my S Pen inserted into the Note 9, and then I can actually use a different S Pen. So here's the Stedler Digital, and I could interact with the screen with this one. So this one doesn't have a button, but it's just a more like number two pencil-like um, S Pen so I could interact and draw on the screen with this. But then if I turn on that option, because my S Pen is inserted, I no longer can interact with the screen. I would need to turn off that again and I can do that. So I have a few different S Pens here. This is the Stedler um, Norris Digital one. This is a S Pen that works with the Galaxy Tab S3. It has the button, it has all the same features. And just so you guys are aware, these S Pens are interchangeable and they don't have to be repaired. So over here, I can actually draw on my Galaxy Tab S3 and then I can come over here. The only thing that's different on the Note 9 is that Bluetooth functionality. You can't hold down the button on here and open anything because it doesn't have that built in. But I can even take some of these old S Pens. This is actually a Note 5 S Pen. I can interact with the screen. Here I have a Galaxy Note 3 S Pen. Still works with the screen. Um, again, if you didn't have the power saving mode off, you would just need to remove this S Pen for the other S Pens to work. So it doesn't work right now. I take out the S Pen and then I have the option for it to work. And then the last few options here is sound. When you insert or remove the S Pen, you can turn that on and off as well as a vibration. And then here you can learn more about the S Pen. But if you watch this video and follow it along, you know every single thing there is to know about the S Pen. One other new addition is within the Pen Up application. So if you go into the Pen Up, create your account. When you create a drawing, you actually have the option to go in and choose a picture. So down here, I can choose a background image. So I'm going to select from my gallery. Um, just choose my gallery here. And then I'm going to choose, let's say I want to draw some Iron Man. I can actually change the opacity of the image. So let's say I just want him on there a little bit. I select save and now I could trace over where he is at, so then I could get the outline of my drawing. And then when I'm done, I can actually hide that to make sure that I have it accurate. I can quickly hide and unhide. And then if I'm completely done and I wanna delete the background image, I would just select the 
option over here to delete the background image. So now I have only my image. I don't consider this copying as it still takes quite a bit of skill to be able to draw something even if you outline it there. Now throughout the video, I have gone into the S Pen settings through Air Command or through the settings of the phone. But one other place that you can get to the settings is to pull down the notification bar, pull it down a second time, scroll over and here you have S Pen Remote. So I can quickly turn off the S Pen Remote just by tapping right there. And then if I select the words, that will open up into this other menu and I can select details and then this takes me right back into the S Pen Remote settings. The last thing I do wanna cover is inside the box you receive this little tool. So if something happens to the tip of the S Pen, you can actually take this tool to pull that out. So inside the box you do have these other two S Pen tips. So one is a hard and a soft one. Previously they would give a lot more, but uh, if you do have this, maybe your kid or something breaks it off, you can quickly add more, and those are inside the box of the Note 9. And there you go, friends. That is everything you need to know about the Galaxy Note 9 and the S Pen. If you have any further questions about any of the features in today's video, let me know in the comments below, and I could make another video all about a specific topic. And if this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. If you would like to see other tutorials all about the Note 9, make sure you select the playlist over there on the side. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.